Hello, Salam Alaikum and welcome to this video. Somebody made me aware of a video in which a woman called The Wandering Quinn talked about misconceptions about Islam and tried to clear those misconceptions. And I started to watch the video. And within the first few minutes, I thought, I just have to respond to this. She made a video called 10 Misconceptions About Islam from a Revert Muslim. So from somebody who has converted to Islam. Somebody who converts to Islam is called a revert in Muslim terms because being a Muslim is your nature. And when you convert to Islam, you revert to that nature. Whatever. She is a travel vlogger who travels to different countries, makes arrangements and agreements, and makes YouTube videos to talk about how it is in those countries and to advertise certain things in those countries. It was apparently when she talked about Saudi Arabia that her channel received a lot of attention, mainly from Muslims. And from then on, whenever she talked about a Muslim region, or about Saudi Arabia, or eventually about Islam, she got a lot of views, and people telling her in the comment section to convert to Islam, and that Islam is a beautiful religion, and so on. And eventually she became a Muslim, and then she started talking about Islam and attempting to explain Islam. I'm pretty sure The Wandering Quinn will have more subscribers than I have quite soon, and I'm very sad about that. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the topic. The Wandering Quinn wants to clear 10 misconceptions about Islam, and I want to look into those right now. And let's start with the most obvious misconception, just to get it out of the way, that Muslims are terrorists. Now, this is, of course, not true. I think the greater misconception is that some people think that many other people think that Muslims are terrorists or all Muslims are terrorists. Because I have rarely, almost never, seen people who seriously think that Muslims are terrorists or all Muslims are terrorists. People would only make such a statement or such an accusation not to be taken literally because Islam tends to send shockwaves around the world through Islamic terrorist attacks. It is therefore entirely normal, even if it was unjust, that people connect terrorism and Islam. If every year you hear about terrorism again and again from Islam, then you start connecting those two things. It is true that Islam is a religion of peace. <laughs> no, I, I can't believe people are still saying this in 2020. People shouldn't be buying this anymore. Neither does Islam mean peace, nor is Islam a religion of peace. The claim that Islam is a religion of peace is simply a meme, and it's completely unfounded. But we'll probably come to that. Now, unfortunately, there are bad people all over the world, and it just so happens that when they are Muslim, it is highlighted in the media, so people think it is always Muslims. And when other deaths occur anywhere else around the world, do they point out their religion? No, they do not. I don't know, the media have got something against Islam. This is some conspiracy theory nonsense, I'm sorry. The media is not against Muslims. Western media has been extremely careful in the last decade when it comes to Muslims and Islam. They have been extremely respectful. They do not amplify Islamic violence and Islamic terrorism and try to hide the religion when non-Muslim terrorists commit violent attacks. The fact is that other religious groups are simply not dominant in religiously motivated terrorist attacks. Religiously motivated terrorist attacks are simply, by statistics, vastly dominated by Islamic terrorism. Islamic terrorist attacks happen all around the world all the time. The vast majority of terrorist attacks in the world are Islamic terrorist attacks. The deadliest attacks in the world are Islamic terrorist attacks. And we also hear much more about them because they keep happening in the West, which gets our attention and the attention of the media. People usually don't care about all those terrorist attacks that happen in Afghanistan or Syria or everywhere else. We don't even talk about more than 90% of Islamic terrorist attacks in the world because they happen on a daily basis around the Islamic world. If we did mention each and every single one of them, we would never stop talking about Islamic terrorism. If a non-Islamic, religiously motivated terrorist attack happens, it does attract our attention, but they simply do not happen on such a vast scale, on such a shocking level, so frequently. When the Christchurch terrorist attack against Muslims in a mosque happened, everyone paid attention to it. And they pointed at the ideology behind the attack, which was white nationalism. How many significant, religiously motivated, non-Islamic terrorist attacks can you really point out? This whole first point is already a misconception itself. 
The second misconception is that Muslims and Islam are the same thing. What the hell? <laughs> Who has that miscon... Do people actually think that Islam and Muslims are one and the same thing? Islam is the religion. Muslims are the believers. Just like Christianity is the religion and Christians are the believers. This is not very deep. God in Arabic is Allah. Even Christian Arabs still use the word Allah because that means God in Arabic. Actually, the word Allah is the proper name of the Islamic God Allah. That is his name. It is thought to have derived from El Allah, which means the God. Arab Christians may say Allah because that is what has become the norm for the one God in Arabic speaking cultures. But the biblical God's name is Yahweh or Yehovah. God is only a title, but the Islamic God's name is Allah. I have made an extensive analysis of this before. The third misconception is that Islam is for Arabs or Eastern countries, and it is not for white Western people like me. That is not true. I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> Islam has a very widely known, notorious struggle to spread the religion to others. Who really thinks that only Arabs and Middle Easterners could be Muslims? I wish that was true. In that case, it wouldn't be such an aggressively and unpleasantly expansionist religion. Not all Arabs are even Muslim. So the idea that Islam is just an Arab religion is also ridiculous because not even all Arabs are Muslim. I don't know what I'm watching. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> Very sorry if I come off like that, but I don't think someone who has a giant misconception about Islam and who has giant misconceptions about misconceptions about Islam should be making a video clarifying misconceptions about Islam. Please. No. Everyone can convert to Islam, which is why Muslims want to spread Islam to the world. Islam is only dominated by Arabic and Arab culture. The fourth misconception is that Islam is forced upon people, which is definitely not the case. I can confirm as a revert Muslim that I was not forced into Islam at all. So hopefully that's one good example. That's not how it works. I can say, for example, that uh, leaving Islam is not punishable by death because I left Islam and I was not killed. No, Islam does do that. I am just not under its power. Your own experience, your situation doesn't define the rule. If Islam was forced on people, then countries would be 100% majority Muslim. That's again not how it works, but whatever. What is true is that Islam claims that it is not forced onto others. The Quran says that you cannot force others to believe in Islam in that it is not possible. There is no obligation. You can't force people to believe in Islam. No matter if you want them to believe or force them to believe, if they don't believe, then they will not believe. It does order, however, to fight those who reject Allah and Muhammad and who don't follow Islam's rules and to subjugate, humiliate, and take protection money from them, known as jizya. In the Hadith, Muhammad is further reported instructing his companions to encounter their opponents and to tell them that they can either convert to Islam, become inferior subjects of the Muslims and pay protection money, or fight and be killed. Theoretically, the opponents could also flee or try to make an agreement with the Muslim armies. In Muhammad's biography and traditions about him, there is constantly war and the glorification of it, where Muslims fight their enemies and enslave them and take their belongings. In fact, Muhammad is reported to have said that he was ordered to fight the people until they testify that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. Misconception that Muslims don't like dogs. Or if you are a Muslim, you cannot have a dog. This is not a misconception at all. Dogs are very unpopular pets in the Islamic world and very uncommon. People in Europe, for example, when they take their dogs for a walk, can often observe that Muslims are careful and anxious around them. Many Muslims around the world may be personally interested in dogs and love them because Muslims are simply humans. But it is in fact Islam which introduces a hostility toward dogs. According to most Islamic scholars and schools, dogs are not to be kept as pets and are considered impure, or their saliva is considered impure. A minority of Islamic scholars and schools disagree only on some details or entirely. And that is all 
Muhammad's fault. We have solid reports in which he said that the angel Gabriel didn't enter his house because there was a dog inside the house, and he wanted the dog to be removed. He also ordered the killing of all dogs in Medina, which the Muslims fulfilled. And he later said that not all dogs, but all black dogs should be killed. Islam definitely has a problem with dogs, and if you are a dog person, then you probably have a problem with Islam, whether you like it or not. Make a choice. I chose my dog. Number six is that Islam forces marriage on people. This is definitely not true. It is true that forcing someone to marry against their will is not the way it is done in Islam. The man and the woman have to agree in order to get married. But according to Muhammad, a woman's silence is her consent. So when she is asked and she doesn't respond, then that means she agrees. It is common in the Islamic world that women are mistreated and forced into marriages. I would not say that this is the Islamically perfect way, but Islam definitely has an impact on the poor treatment of women. It is not a coincidence that this is so common in the Islamic world, as the Wandering Quinn also points out. The misconception is that women have no rights in Islam. Now, again... If that was true, I would have not have become Muslim. If I ever said that women have no rights in Islam, then I would probably say that as an exaggeration in order to make a point. To imply that women's rights are quite sad in Islam. There is no such thing as not having any rights at all. And the fact that women have some rights does not mean that they are in any good situation at all. Islam actually gave women their rights. Women had no rights. This is untrue. Muhammad's first wife was a wealthy woman who was his employer. So Muhammad, the man, was actually employed by a wealthy woman in pre-Islamic Mecca. And later he married her and they became wife and husband. Women had their own properties, they participated in trade, they participated in religious activities. In fact, one report even tells us that women had the upper hand in Medina over men before Islam arrived. The problem is that we know very little about pre-Islamic Arabia. Most of our sources are Islamic, and we are at the mercy of what Islam says about pre-Islamic Arabia. And Islam says bad things about pre-Islamic Arabia because it has to justify itself and humiliate the past. That's how it's always done. Women are forced to cover or that they cover because of men. Now, obviously, as you can see, I am not wearing a hijab, but I am a Muslim, so that's one example of the fact that that is wrong. There is that false logic again. Actually, Muslim women cover for God. It shows that you're Muslim. So yeah, if you can't tell already, that is all through choice. It is not forced. Okay, she has a complete misconception, a misrepresentation of the hijab. Although I like it when Islam is being corrupted, <laughs> I just have to correct it. Women have to cover in Islam. There is no discussion about this in Islamic history, fundamental Islamic sources, among the majority of scholars. The hijab is obligatory for women. It is ordered in the Quran and the Hadith, and Islam is supposed to be a state religion that enforces its orders. Therefore, in Islamic history, Islamic lands always enforced the hijab. Today, it is only legally enforced in two countries, but parents are supposed to make their children observe religious practices. And it is extremely common that in Muslim culture, daughters or wives are forced or pressured into wearing the hijab. People like Yasmin Mohammed can tell you a lot about that. If you are in a situation where no one forces you, then that's great. I'm very happy. But don't apply your luxury, your freedom, your luck to others and dismiss this huge problem. Wearing the hijab is not something that Muslim women just do because they want to do it for Allah. What the point of that would be is beyond me anyway. They do it because they have to do it, according to Islam. Islam orders them to do it. And in case you didn't know, Quran chapter 4 verse 34 notoriously authorizes husbands to discipline their wives. Lastly, by beating her if they are disobedient. Number nine is that Islam is restrictive and it's not fun. And this is definitely not the case. Okay, let's see. 
You cannot uncover your hair as a woman. You have to dress a specific way. Music is forbidden or very restricted. Drawing living beings or making statues is forbidden. Dancing is forbidden. Women should stay in their homes. They shouldn't talk to men unnecessarily. Love relationships are forbidden. Looking at the opposite gender is forbidden. Pork is forbidden. Alcohol is forbidden. Dogs are forbidden. Questioning and criticizing Islam is forbidden and punished by death. Apostasy is forbidden and punished by death. Homosexuality is forbidden and punished by death. Dressing like the opposite gender is forbidden. Disagreeing with Muhammad is forbidden. Closely befriending non-Muslims is forbidden. Interest is forbidden. Running from the battlefield is a deadly sin. And so on. And meanwhile, you are to pray five times a day, sometimes even more, fast for a whole month, do everything that you do throughout your day a specific way, by reciting specific things, and you are constantly occupied with Islam, which gives you no proper time to do anything else. Which is why Islamic countries, especially religious circles, tend to be so unproductive and lack recreational or healthy activities. Because they're constantly occupied with Islam and not allowed to have fun. That sounds quite restrictive to me. And personally, I would prefer for my restrictions to be dominated by a religion that actually cares about me. Just one question. How do you conclude that Islam actually cares about you? I would love to discuss that. So the last misconception is that Muslim men all have more than one wife, which is definitely not true. I don't know if this is something that people actually think, but I have never encountered a person who thinks that all Muslim men have multiple wives or four wives. Now it is true that Muslim men can have up to four wives. They do have to treat them all the same. That comes to finances, it comes to the time they spend with them and how much they love them, I believe. It is a misconception that Muslim men have to treat their wives completely equally in terms of finances, love, care, time, whatever it is. And that the impossibility of this prevents Muslim men from marrying more wives. The Quran only says that Muslim men can marry up to four wives, but if they fear that they can't treat them justly, not equally, justly, then they should only marry one. Or their female sex slaves, by the way. Those their right hands possess. How pleasant. Just does not mean equal. There is no such condition and concept. If a man is, for example, doing financially very well and thinks that he can handle multiple wives, then he can go ahead and do it and take multiple wives, up to four. But if he thinks, I don't have the means and I don't have the nerve to take care of more than just one woman, then he is advised to only have one wife. Or to take his sex slaves too, which is of course very convenient for a man. Yes, in case you didn't know, Islam has slavery, including sex slavery. When a man starts to take then more than one wife, the other wives and the other wife, they have to know about it and agree with it. That is entirely untrue and unfounded. This is something that pop Muslims tend to say, but which is not founded on any proper Islamic sources. The idea is that a man can marry up to four women, and that this is his right, directly authorized by Allah. He doesn't need the permission of anybody else, including his wife. And that's it. Unfortunately, the Wandering Queen has not cleared any misconceptions, because she herself seems to have misconceptions about Islam. Much of the positive or negative stuff that people think about Islam is untrue. But many of the things that you hear about Islam don't come out of thin air. I have talked about problems surrounding Islamic scripture, morality and Muhammad extensively on this channel. If you are interested, please check it out. Now I am in the mood to make a video called 10 Misconceptions About Islam. To you, wandering Quinn, the way you described yourself so far and the way you appear, Islam does not really seem to be what you are looking for in life. Going further into it may only bring you disappointment, and you might find yourself trapped in it, fooling yourself that you want to stay in it, because you have made big decisions and you don't want to be wrong about what you have found. This is very common, I have seen it myself many times. I would suggest that you don't listen to what other people say about Islam, but rather just look into the Islamic sources yourself. Listen to both advocates and critics of Islam, especially when the advocates of Islam are so hostile toward critics like me, and they would never want you to engage with the critics. They try to sell you a product, and they treat the bad reviews of that product very badly. 
Look at those bad reviews. There is probably something there if they are so protective and so hostile about it. Thanks for listening. I'll be back soon. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so, so much. And stay away from Islam.